think the key to their success at Cowden Beath was very much down to having guys with a desire, having a lot of young lads and a mixture of a wee bit of experience in there um, to carry them through, a wee bit of youth and blend. And the biggest thing for me at that level is um, we're only having them uh, twice a week, was to have them as fit as you could reasonably get them. But the biggest thing for me was uh, their organisational uh, skills in possession of the ball and out of possession of the ball. And that was a big thing that we, we definitely worked on. And every single one of them, uh, with the success that, that they did have, um, they, knew, they, knew their, they knew their own responsibilities and their own jobs. I was, uh, I was actually playing junior football um, with my local junior team, uh, Dundonald. Um, I was there for... I was about 17, so um, I'd done at the start of the season when I did sign McCown Meath, sign McCown Meath in the January. The start of that season, obviously, I started with Dundonald, and I think I scored about 17 goals in 19 games. Um, and played for McCown Meath in a, a bounce game, friendly, which uh, the manager had organised at the time. And we beat them 2 1, and I scored them both. So uh, after that, that's when I, I signed McCown Meath. So. In terms of the sort of spirit and, and the guys there, and that it's a really good club, and I enjoyed it the first time I went and the second time. And obviously, it's it's, it's been a stepping stone for where I'm now. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that the gaffer took me uh, to Cowden Beef and also to St Mirren. So it's, it's it's worked out well in the, in my career, to be fair. And we had a great team spirit. That was the thing. I think more, more than anything was the team spirit. One of the best, still the best changing room I've been in was is that Cowden Beef squad was just unbelievable. There was no cliques, no de. Uh, Nib did their own wee groups. Everybody could speak to everybody, so I think that's a massive, a massive help as well. That uh, that all the boys were on the same level, and and uh, that definitely helped us. Uh, with that, I, I didn't think we would have done half the stuff we'd done. So uh, it was a team spirit more than anything that won us through. To be fair, although there's a good dressing room at St. Man, um, dressing room at Cowan Youth was really good. Good bunch of boys, and uh, we all had a sort of good laugh, and everybody was was in it together. There wasn't any. Any big time challenges or anything, everybody was sort of in it together. It was all down to earth people, and there wasn't any film stars among them, there wasn't any superstars, so they, they, they all had a, a job to do. And sometimes at the grassroots of football, that, that it's, it's like that, you can sometimes lose that the further up the levels you go. But those lads all had their feet firmly on the ground, and there wasn't any prima donnas in among that, and that, that was good. The Cowdenbeath joker in the, in the park was uh, Brian Fairbairn. Well, I think uh, probably we Frankie Fairbairn would be would be the best one for that. Um, I actually got on really well with Brian. He, he was st still speak to him and stuff. And uh, we, we <laughs> he was the uh, he was a joker in the park. I'll tell you a story about him. Frankie's party piece. He would go in the coach, and irrespective of who the driver was, it could be it could be twenty two or eighty two. It didn't matter to Frankie. He used to. Um, away trips like to Peterhead and Elgin and stuff uh, up north. It was a three-hour journey, so pretty boring. Yeah. Boys got bored off easily, so he was uh, his party trick was to strip off at the back of the bus, <laughs> totally naked. Absolutely naked, and walk down to the front of the bus and ask the driver, "Excuse me, tap him on the shoulder." And say to the bus driver, "It's a bit hot in here. Any chance of putting heating down?" <laughs> it's too warm in here, and of course the driver. I don't know how he never crashed because he, he, he would have to do a double take, realizing that he was absolutely naked. You know, it's not what you expect to see over your shoulder in the coach, but it was hilarious. We used to. I always, he was a good lad. He was a good lad for me. But uh, fun times. You know, we were very well worthy winners in the day and I, th I think the boys just knew that they had an opportunity to go and make a wee bit of, a wee bit of club history there. You know, so that, that certainly drives them on and um, after it, was a, it was a wonderful occasion. It's, it's still to this day is the best best day of my life, that, that away to break in and the celebrations after and, and just seeing how much it meant to the fans, uh, a small wee community in Cowden and Beef and, and, and what we've done and how everybody came together and went back to, I think it was wee Jimmy's we went back to and it was just an unbelievable night, I'll never forget. And the fans that day were just magn magnificent, absolutely magnificent. I remember the police inspector coming up to myself and they, 
I think it was we Andy Quinn, the kit man, and said that you, you need to, uh, you need to, get, you need to get the players back in the dressing room. And of course, we were surrounded by spectators at that time. And I said to them, "You get them back in the dressing room." <laughs> there was, we couldn't go anywhere. There was, <laughs> it was brilliant. He was a bit frustrated because everybody was on the park, but there's nothing, there's nothing we could have done about it. And it was, they were, it was all light-hearted. There was never, there was never anything untoward was going to happen. But it was a magnificent day. I'm a big, big believer. You know, we'd, we'd in the in the closing month coming down there, we'd given up a three-nil lead against Brecon about three weeks prior to the final, um, and then the following week we'd gave up the three-goal lead against Stirling Albion. So I always knew that 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 wasn't going to turn into a third. We were certainly aware, even on the touchline with the, the coaches and the, the positivity that we were still to remain there, not to not to focus and remember what, what's happened in the past, because as soon as you remember them, they start thinking about it. So it was just to remain focused. And, and the second half, the second half was just a manner of uh, starting the game properly again. And once we'd, we'd held it on there, we were very, very comfortable. And, wouldn't he give them any opportunities? Because I remember prior to um, the start of the game, they actually had a decent chance. I think they actually hit the crossbar if it would be right in the first five, ten minutes of the game. And then I think we also, through we Paul McQuaid, hit the crossbar um, also. And then the goals were crucial, crucial for us. They came at very good times and it sort of killed them off a bit. It was a kind of bittersweet because I, I, I pulled up with my groin and I went um, maybe half an hour into the into the game, 40 minutes into the, in the first half, so I had to come off just before half time, um, which was a bit disappointing personally, but we were 2 0 up at that point, <clears throat> and I'd had a hand in the first goal. Um, but at the, at the end of the game, it was just um, something that, you know, obviously it's, you say it's second division level, and you want to do, go higher and, and continue to win things at, at, at the higher level, but um, in that moment of time, it was like we won the World Cup. Uh, it was the best feeling in the world, honestly. The Junction Bar, yeah, that was. Uh, we, we ended up back there, Big Stuart, the, the licensee, and I remember getting in the door, and I can hardly remember. I don't even know how we got into the sort of upper level to the right, because we we kind of got carried away in a sea of pe- sea of people and just a, a spray of uh, of champagne uh, going everywhere, and we had our, we had the suits on, the club blazers, and the, uh, I think I gave away my tie, my my blazer, and everything that night. So that, that was probably in somebody's. Uh, somebody's house in County somewhere, but it was it was magnificent, absolutely brilliant.